What's up, guys? I'm Chris Spaggs here, back for another showdown breakdown for tonight's Monday Night Football battle between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets, courtesy of Osmo.com. Tonight, we've got ourselves an AFC East battle between two teams, one of whom should be looking pretty good, and the other might be completely overmatched. We'll find out in a few short hours, but right now, please do me a favor and like this video, and also comment the guy I think is going to break tonight's slate down below. We've had some good guesses over the last few slates. Hopefully, we won't have any serious injuries that make a guy like Matt Moore in play like our last showdown video, but either way, like this video and comment your slate breaker down below. But as always, let's kick it off with the quarterbacks in this Monday night football game. And let's start with Tom Brady in the matchup at the Jets in which there are 26.5 implied points for New England. Brady projects to have the top raw points in this game. And on paper, he seems like a necessary piece, but he's also gonna be the top owned one as a regular position and a captain. The Jets blitz at a high 40% clip and pressure has been an issue for Brady with just 50% accuracy and a 66.7 QB rating in those situations. But New England's line should mostly be able to keep him clean with a low 4.2% sack rate on the year. Year. And on the other side, we have the swollen spleen Sam Darnold in this matchup with New England in which there are 16.5 implied points for the Jets. Despite that swollen spleen, Darnold has looked decent in his limited action this year with a 70% completion rate and a 1.4% interception rate a mostly low risk throws with just 7 air yards per attempt. The low total in New England's 53% completion rate with a 26% pass deflection rate will make Darnold less owned. So stacks of Darnold and Jets receivers are a contrarian, but possibly very risky move. And now onto the running backs in this game. And of course, we have Sony Michelle and James White in this matchup matchup at the Jets. White as a cheaper play is appealing given his pass game involvement and Michelle's disappointing effort on the year with just 3.5 yards per rush and 2 yards after contact per attempt. But with more ownership expected for White and no Rex Burkhead, Michelle can be sneakier than a guy getting 17.5 touches per game should be. The Jets allow 5.2 points per red zone visit so New England shouldn't find a great deal of resistance when on the opponent's side of the field. A benefit to White's 1.8 red zone targets per game as well as Michelle's 3 red zone rushes per game and of course Brandon Boland's TD vulturing potential. And for the Jets on the other side we have Lave on Bell in this matchup versus New England. Bell has historically had some struggles versus New England, and the situation isn't much better with New England allowing opponents just 18 rushes per game and decreasing running backs' pass catching production by 24%, according to Football Outsiders DVOA. Despite that, Bell has a solid projection and a floor that will make him one of the highest owned players on the slate, but he's a consideration of fade in some lineup builds given the Jets' iffy run blocking and the likelihood of the Jets trailing early. And now, onto the receivers in this Monday night football game, and let's start with New England receivers at the Jets. Julian Edelman also projects as a top raw points play with a high price and high. I expect an ownership with 9.3 targets per game and likelihood of more volume with no Josh Gordon, Ryan Izzo, or Matt Lacoste available tonight. Philip Dorsett with 22.5% targets per route is a more appealing option than Jacoby Myers, though Myers did run 33 routes with Dorsett out in week six. And Ben Watson should also be in the mix with no tight ends left for New England and three targets per game left behind by their absences. And on the other side, we have the illustrious crew of Jets receivers versus New England. Robbie Anderson led the Jets in routes in week six with 35, and he also saw three targets of 20 plus yards. But Anderson seeing Jason McCourty or Stefan Gil more outside is very much a low floor GPP play. Jamison Crowder and Demarius Thomas could benefit from the threat that Anderson presents with both over 30 routes run in week six, but neither projects terribly well while Ryan Griffin has been really uninvolved with just two targets per game. And last but not least, let's talk about the kickers and the defenses and start it off with the Jets defense versus New England. The Jets defense had a surprisingly good day versus New England in week three with some fluky touchdowns, but it's hard to imagine them getting a lot done versus New England with that high team total and some very obvious advantages for them in the run game and at receiver. And on the other side, we have the much more appealing New England defense versus the Jets. New England has been an elite defense that allows just 235 yards per game with high pass deflection rates, a 7% interception rate, and an 11% forced fumble rate, so they do seem worth some exposure despite their high prices with no game under 11 fantasy points for them so far. And of course, we have the kickers who have been very valuable recently in some showdown builds. New England should be able to punch the ball into the end zone with the Jets defense allowing 5.2 points per red zone visit, but if they stall out, Mike Nugent could have some use. And Sam Thicken is only playable in lineups that assume the Jets can move the ball before struggling against New England's stout red zone defense a defense that gives up just 2.5 points per red zone visit. So there you have it. That's what I'm seeing so far for tonight's matchup between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. So right now, please hit that like button and also comment your slate breaker down below. And if you need some more data to help build your lineups tonight, you can also use this promo code Switch and Hedge for half off your first month of Osmo Plus. We have showdown ownership projections as well as showdown player projections. A lot of this data is going to help you out. We also have packages as low as $3.95 a week. That's cheaper than a combo meal. So go check out these packages at Osmo.com slash join. Use that promo code Switch and Hedge for half off your first month. Go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Spaggs. It was my birthday yesterday. You know that year of maturity is going to make me put out even better content. So go check out what I'm doing right now on Twitter and Instagram at Chris Spaggs. I'll be back with you guys on Thursday for another showdown breakdown. So keep your eyes peeled there in addition to all the other content I'm doing here on this YouTube channel. I'll be back with you guys again very soon. So thank you for watching. And of course, good luck.